Welcome to a journey through time, a trip into the labyrinth of history, lodged in the very heart of the nation's capital. The Smithsonian Institution, fondly known as America's Attic, boasts a repository of millions of unique items. From artwork to historical artifacts and specimens, it's a treasure trove of the world's history. Imagine the highways that snaked across the country, ushering eager folks towards the promise of the West. Picture a tiny slice of that very asphalt from the world-famous Route 66, now resting as a silent relic of Americana. Visualize a kitchen gadget and infomercial sensation with its bold promise to revolutionize your vegetable chopping routine. Yes, the Vegomatic 2. Take a moment to honor Cher Ami, a brave carrier pigeon from the World War I era, whose heroic flight saved lives. Now, can you picture a 16th-century mechanized monk from Spain, with gears whirring and wooden limbs, echoing time old chants? But that's not all, for the Smithsonian also shelters secrets of presidential history and mementos of those who dare to push the boundaries of science. And then, there's something that is so unexpected. Ah, but you'll find out in due course. Hey there, curiosity explorers. Ready for another dive into the unknown? I'm your host, Caesar, and with me is the one and only, Sonia Gamarez, our guide through the depths of knowledge. Hi, fellow adventurers. Excited to be back and to dive into today's mystery with all of you. And if you're loving these daily journeys into the unknown, be sure to subscribe to the Curiosity Wonderland, comment, and share it with your fellow Curiosity explorers. Your involvement is what fuels our adventures. So let's start with something truly American, a famous highway asphalt. Picture this, a 50-foot-long stretch of Route 66, the iconic highway that helped move Americans westward in the early 20th century. Wait, asphalt from a highway? In a museum? That's a first. Indeed, it's not something you'd typically expect in a museum. But then again, the Smithsonian isn't your typical museum. They reached out to Oklahoma in 2000 and asked for this piece of American history. And Route 66, it's pretty famous, right? I seem to recall it being mentioned in quite a few movies and songs. Absolutely. It's graced the pages of novels, been immortalized in film, television, and even music. It's seen as a symbol of American culture and freedom, lending it a kind of historical and emotional weight. And this highway still exists, right? I mean, people can still drive on it? You're right. Much of Route 66 is still passable. The road has been paved over and smoothed out as the years have passed. It runs from Illinois, across several states all the way to California, right up to the Pacific Ocean. So it's a piece of living history, then. That's pretty cool. Definitely. Route 66 is quite a testament to the American spirit. A literal road from the past that you can still travel on in the present. Moving on from the highway asphalt, let's shift our focus to something that's a little less serious and a bit more on the fun side. Ever heard of the Vegomatic? Is that one of those as seen on TV things? You're right on the money. Vegomatic 2, to be exact. An infomercial sensation created by the Popeil brothers, with the limelight hogged by Ron Popeil who took it to television in the 1980s. Ah, those late-night infomercials. I can almost hear the dramatic sales pitch. Yeah, and that aggressive late-night advertising paid off. The Vegomatic 2 became such a huge hit that it went viral, if you can believe it, decades before the internet made going viral a common phrase. And this thing is at the Smithsonian? It sure is. The Smithsonian asked the Popeil family for a Vegomatic for their collection in 1986. Along with it, they even received a recording of the iconic on-air infomercial pitch, complete with the classic, but wait. There's more. That's hilarious. And to think such a thing is part of history in its own unique way. Indeed, it's a testament to how varied and interesting the artifacts housed in the Smithsonian can be. Now, let's move on to another artifact, and this one is much more serious and important. A pigeon by the name of Cher Ami. A pigeon? Now I'm really intrigued. Cher Ami was a carrier pigeon of the U.S. Army during World War I. He flew a dozen missions, but the most infamous was on October 4, 1918. The U.S. Army's 77th Infantry Division was trapped behind German lines, and their colleagues, not knowing their exact location, began accidentally bombing them. That sounds like an absolute nightmare. It was. 
Major Charles Whittlesey, who was in charge of the 77th, had several pigeons to send messages, but they were all shot down. All but one. Share army. So the pigeon was the last hope? Exactly. Share army flew through a barrage of bullets, covering more than 25 miles in just over 25 minutes. He was injured brutally, losing an eye and suffering a shot to his breastbone. Another wound nearly severed one of his legs. But despite all this, he made it to camp and delivered the message. And that message saved lives, right? It did. It saved the lives of 194 soldiers in the Lost Battalion. For his bravery, Sher Ami now rests within the Smithsonian as an honored historical artifact. Isn't it incredible what a small bird could accomplish? Absolutely. It's a testament to the importance of communication and the will to survive. Incredible indeed. This world of curiosities never ceases to amaze me. Each fact, each discovery, is more fascinating than the last. What do you think, dear listeners? Are you finding this as intriguing as we are? Let's take a moment to reflect on these incredible stories and remember to appreciate the beauty and bravery found in the most unexpected places. Moving on from Sher Ami, let's turn to another piece of history that's housed in the Smithsonian. This one is regarding the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, more commonly known as the Mormons. They began constructing the Nauvoo Temple in Illinois in 1841. Oh, I remember learning a little about this in school. The construction included several massive sunstones, moonstones, and starstones. But after an arson attack and a tornado, the temple was destroyed and the Mormons moved west. However, one of the sunstones survived and was bought by the Smithsonian in 1989 for a cool $40,000. That must be a magnificent piece. Yes, it weighs 5,000 pounds and features an intricate face carved into a sun coming out from a cloud bank underneath two heavenly trumpets. It holds great importance for Mormon culture and for anyone interested in commemorating major events in America's past. It's fascinating how these artifacts can hold so much history and meaning to people. Absolutely. Now, let's move on to another piece of history. This one is a bit more recent and tragic. It's about a boy known as the Bubble Boy. Oh, that's a heart-wrenching story. I remember when I was a kid, I got chicken pox and had to stay in my room for what seemed like forever. I felt so isolated. But compared to what David Vetter, the real Bubble Boy, went through, my experience was nothing. He lived in a bubble suit that was built by NASA to protect him from harmful infections due to his severe combined immunodeficiency. Yes, it's a sad story. The suit, technically called an isolator, was unique and advanced for its time. Once he got inside, he could go outside more often and see parts of society again. Even in such confinement, there's a sense of human resilience and the will to experience life as much as we can. It's truly moving. After David Vetter's untimely passing in 1984, the Smithsonian acquired his full bubble suit, as well as the mobile support vehicle that accompanied him on his trips outside. They also have one of his stationary isolation units and several personal possessions, including drawings, toys, and games. It's a stark reminder of the human spirit and how we adapt to overcome adversity. Absolutely. His resilience is incredibly inspiring. And although it's a tragic story, it has also led to medical advancements and greater understanding of immunodeficiency conditions. Moving away from medical marvels, let's dive into the world of film. I bet many of our listeners are familiar with Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford's renowned archaeologist character has been gracing the big screen since 1981, unraveling mysteries of the ancient world. I've always been a fan of Indiana Jones. His adventures are always filled with excitement and intrigue. How about this for intrigue, some of Indiana Jones's items are actually in the Smithsonian. The production company donated Jones's iconic fedora, his leather jacket, and even his bullwhip to the museum. It seems life indeed imitates art. That's amazing. I guess it's true what Jones often says in the movies, that belongs in a museum. Speaking of advancements and inventions, let us move on to the next curiosity. In the late 1940s, a student from the Yale School of Medicine, named William H. Sewell, created a functioning heart pump. Compared to what we have now for heart health in the medical community, it was a primitive device. But we'll get to that in a bit. Now, this next piece is as fascinating as it is surprising. 
William H. Sewell's heart pump, a pioneering invention in cardiology, was made entirely out of pieces from an erector set. Wait, like the children's construction toy? Exactly. Sewell and his thesis advisor, William W. Weld Glenn, put this together between 1948 and 1949. And guess what it cost them? Just a dollar and 80 cents for the erector set and a few extra pieces. That's incredible. The ingenuity of humans never ceases to amaze me. It's remarkable, isn't it? The pump needed only a tank of compressed air and a vacuum pump to work. In fact, it was successfully used in several experiments with dogs, demonstrating the erector set's capability to sustain life. I guess it's a testament to the saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Very true. Of course, human heart pumps and other cardiologic equipment have come a long way since then. But creations like Sewell's have been critical in driving medicine forward. Now, let's shift gears and move back a few centuries to the 16th century in Spain, where we find a mechanically animated monk. An animated monk? Now that's something I didn't expect to hear today. It's a 15-inch tall wooden monk, automated with a set of gears that allow it to make a few pre-designed movements. When wound up, it moves its mouth as though chanting, takes a few steps, and raises its arms in devotional movements. That's quite an intricate piece of machinery, especially for the 16th century. It is. And the backstory behind it is even more intriguing. We'll delve into that in a moment. Now, back to the mechanized monk. The monk was commissioned by King Philip II of Spain after his son Don Carlos, the crown prince, survived severe injuries that almost took his life. The mechanized monk was meant to represent King Philip's piety and gratitude for his son's survival and recovery. How about that for a thank you note? That's fascinating, but it's also a bit surreal, isn't it? How does a mechanized monk become a symbol of gratitude? It's hard to say, but perhaps it was meant to symbolize the fervor of the king's prayers or serve as a representation of his faith. Now, let's shift our focus to the Smithsonian's collection of presidential mementos. They have iconic items such as Ben Franklin's cane and a tent that George Washington slept in during a battle. There are also important historical artifacts, like patent applications filed by Abraham Lincoln and the microphone Franklin D. Roosevelt used to deliver his fireside chats. What are some of the more unusual items in the collection? Well, there are Warren Harding's silk pajamas and Harry S. Truman's favorite bowling pins. However, one of the strangest might be a framed display of locks of hair cut from the heads of America's first 14 presidents. Wait, locks of hair from the presidents? That's not something you hear every day. Indeed. It adds a very personal and somewhat surreal aspect to the collection. And if you think that's bizarre, the museum also houses two keepsakes owned by presidents and used on the days they were assassinated. They have the top hat worn by Lincoln on the day he was killed and a cup from which William McKinley had just drunk moments before he was shot. A grim reminder of the dangers and sacrifices of leadership. It's amazing how these personal items can bring history to life, isn't it? It's a stark reminder that these were real people leading complicated lives. Now let's get to the last curiosity for today. It's a fast food bun gauge. The concept of fast food revolves around the idea of consistency. You should be able to enjoy the same burger in Maine as you would in California. And this little tool, the bun gauge, plays a crucial role in maintaining that consistency. A bun gauge? Now that's something I never thought I would hear about. How does it work? It's a device that allows fast food workers to ensure the buns they are producing have uniform height, thickness, and circumference. It was used extensively in the latter half of the 20th century and still plays a part today in maintaining that familiar fast food experience. So, it's not just about the recipe, but also the consistency of the physical size and shape of the food. That's quite interesting. It is. And this little tool has now found its way into the Smithsonian's collection, serving as a piece of American fast food history. While it may seem unlikely, it's an artifact that truly reflects a part of Americana, making it an apt addition to the museum. Who knew the humble bun gauge would hold such significance in cultural history? So there you have it, folks. The Smithsonian Institution, tagged as America's Attic, is home to a fascinating array of objects that capture the essence of America's history, culture, and even its quirks. From a portion of Route 66 to the Vegomatic 2, from locks of hair from the first 14 presidents to a mechanized monk and a fast food bun gauge, the museum houses the weird, the wonderful, and everything in between. 
It's a reminder that history isn't always grand battles and famous speeches, but often the everyday objects we take for granted. Absolutely. These objects tell the story of who we are, where we've come from, and in some cases, where we're going. It's been fascinating delving into these oddities, and we hope you've enjoyed this journey with us. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please blast that like button, leave us a comment, and share this episode with your friends. We appreciate all the support and feedback. So, until next time, keep your curiosity alive and your spirit adventurous. Goodbye, everyone, and take care. Goodbye, and remember, there's always more to learn. Our deep dive into the bizarre items at the Smithsonian comes from an article titled 10 Truly Bizarre Things Kept at the Smithsonian on Listverse. The article, authored by Selmi Angulo, was published on October 19, 2023. You can find the full URL in the video description if you want to delve deeper into the subject. Until next time, keep exploring!